Okay, good morning. Here we are in the OK Turbo shop. So, I didn't do a video on the uh, finishing of this thing, but uh, basically what I did was uh, it's locked cardboard tubing uh, and plywood fins through the wall. But I went through it and uh, tried to fill in the, the spirals with uh, my favorite filler, this uh, single part uh, Bondo putty. And then uh, several coats of, well, a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum gray primer, gray automotive primer, sanding that in between coats. Then uh, for the body tube, I used lacquer, just because I like the way it goes on. It dries very quickly, goes on thinner. Uh, the nose cone, the color I wanted to use was this uh, Rust-Oleum met metallic copper. So it turned out pretty good. But uh, it's an enamel, so... Um, and it's fiberglass, fiberglass nose cone from a mad cow. And uh, so we got a, you know, it, it, it got primered. Then I did a base coat of Rust-Oleum white enamel. And then I put the uh, copper color on top of that. But the rest of it is, is all lacquer. So this is the lacquer finish. Um, the other reason why I do that is because the best luck I've had with clear coats over vinyl has been the just the clear coat dupla color lacquer. So um, I just I just like the way the lacquer goes on better. It dries very quick. Like I said, it goes on thinner. I just had better luck with it. So it is. I mean, it's all expensive nowadays anyway. So so what I was going to do here is just kind of show how I do the the vinyl graphics. So these are sticker shock vinyl graphics. Um, uh, last night I kind of put these on. Um, then I said, well. Why don't I do a video on this? Not everybody may have used these. Um, they're a little bit different than the water slides. Um, they're cut vinyl uh, rather than printed. So um, I'll just kind of go through that. Um, I've kind of got things started to lay them out. Got things laid out here. Luckily on this model, if you look at the old instructions from the Estes kit, they actually have a layout of dimensions on you know, where things are supposed to go. So this is a four times upscale. So really I'm just kind of multiplying each of these by four. Not, a, it doesn't always turn out exactly. Cause like I noticed here where this decal goes here, they say to measure up, you know, is an inch scaled up. It's an inch, and then two and a quarter. Well, I measure two and a quarter. Well, these, these, uh, roll stripes, whatever you want to call them, end up being kind of in a weird area. So I went ahead and laid out you know, I know where the other ones are supposed to be, so I'm laying those out. So um, I'm going to set up the camera, kind of go through how I how I do these. The other thing that I've done is on this rocket, it's going to just years of experience of building these things. Typically, when I'm building, I like to go ahead and cut the uh, the vent holes and 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 see where I'm going to put my uh, my rail buttons, things like that. Where am I going to put the switch for the electronics bay, vent for it, things like that. But what I found is like, you know, on this Iris and some of these other rockets that have a lot of a lot of detail, if you put those vent holes and things on before you finished it, sometimes the graphics end up being over on top of it. So that's what I had to do. Like on Thor here, you can see there's a couple of these um, rivets that are right there. I don't know if you can see it. I painted them, but they're right there where that wrap was, where that decal is, that vinyl. I'm like, well, I don't want a couple of just black rivets there. So if I had waited, I probably could have spaced those, you know, in the black areas and, and, and made that a little bit better. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go ahead and put the graphics on. Then I'll go through and uh, put the rivet holes and put the vent holes and things like that. So anyhow, so here we go. Let me set up and we'll start putting some uh, vinyl on to kind of see how that works. Okay, here we go. So, kind of taking that roll pattern decal off. Um, so luckily, like I said, I have, you know, a guide on uh, the graphic decal placement for this rocket. But most of the time you're just doing the, you know, TLAR, that looks about right kind of a thing. You kind of look at the pictures um, and uh, use some references and things like that. So. The way this rocket is set up, 
on the graphics. It looks like, you know, this, this tunnel is the top. And so if you look down, I've tried to set it level. And then it's kind of set up like a cruise missile kind of a thing. So, um, you know, this is the horizontal line. So looking at the pictures, it looks like the top of this star is right about in line with with these fins. So what I've done, or what I'm doing here is get my straight edge. Luckily, it fits right there. So let's see if I can set this down so I'm not, I'm not having to hold it. So I've kind of got just some painter's tape and you try and get this set up. So what I'm going for is I've got it marked the distance along the length here, the axial distance. I've got a very small tick mark there. So it was supposed to be nine inches from, from the top of that fin. So that's set up about right there. So that's the edge of that, that graphic. And then what I'm gonna try and do is get this set where the top of that star is right At that length, so the top of that star is right in line with those. So right about. And the idea here is that I'm going to do something that I'm that's repeatable on the other side, rather than just slap it on there. So that looks correct there. So I'll hold that. What I'm going to do is I use painter's tape. And you'll see the reason for this here in a minute. Kind of make a, really just almost like a hinge. I'm gonna actually add a little bit more there because you don't want this to move once you start messing around with it. Okay, now let's check again. Let's get this one out of the way. We can even get this out of the way too so that it doesn't mess us up. Okay, let's see what I've done here. Let's and we want to make sure that, that that is looking like it's you know in line with everything horizontal. And actually that looks pretty darn good right there. Yeah, I could measure it, but that looks good. Kind of stand back and do the, yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and commit to this one. So what I've done is I've created a little hinge there. And that way it keeps everything lined up so that there's no guessing when I come back. So this is kind of, you gotta have to watch these things because sometimes with small print, they are cut vinyl. So the bottom layer is just all the blues. So that's good. Peel that off. Kind of watch it here. And then this allows you just to go straight down. Just kind of start working it in. That backing paper keeps all that cut vinyl lined up while it goes down. Then we can kind of peel this off. I use several small pieces of tape, but you can, you can use one piece of tape. It just for me, it's I'm usually kind of basically, I guess you call it tacking it on there with small pieces. That way, I can make little movements if I want to. So now it's kind of stuck on. Then we just want to make sure that. You can use just squeegee. I usually just use my hands because I don't want to uh, mar the paint or anything like that. Then the tackiness of this, just kind of peel it back. I usually go just straight back like this. It keeps it from lifting that vinyl up. And like I said, this is not printed. This is cut vinyl. I 
and voila, there you go. So when, when we're done, we'll clear coat all this to kind of keep it keep it sealed into the paint. I'm gonna go ahead and erase these little tick marks I made with pencil. Okay. There you go. That's how you put on vinyl, cut vinyl stickers. Okay, I didn't make it very far. Um, I do want to show this because this is what you run into on these rockets. I mean, it's a high power rocket and you're doing it upscale. So the graphics weren't taking into account like electronics bays and things like that. So I've got my mark here where this is supposed to begin, this US Air Force. So it's going to go right there. We'll see what's happening here. We're right on this transition where that uh, electronics bay is and that switch band. So what I'm gonna try and do, actually it turns out pretty good on this side. We'll have to see what happens on the other side. But if I can get it right between that A and the I, that seam, then I don't have to slice any of those uh, letters. And if I look on the end here, it actually ends up right in a good spot. Now what's gonna happen the other, because the other way it's gonna be, you know, over here somewhere in the air force and the force part those letters there. So let's line this up, try and get that right there on the seam, tack it down a couple of these, check alignment, is it level? You see there I did either that skill or I got lucky. I got that seam in there. You really want those to stick. I'll rub those down. Get all of our same kind of a routine. What's the other thing I do is I try and peel it at an angle so that you're not uh, catching just straight on an edge. I'm always watching this right here just to make sure that I'm not going to pull one of those up. There you go. Not bad, if I should say so myself. Okay. Well, it's not perfect. But it definitely fits the that looks about right. And the graphics really do help the look of it. Not quite so plain. Looking cool. So let's work on this other side. Okay, before this battery runs out, I'll show you what I ended up here. So if I line this up, you can see how I'm going to have to scoot a little bit forward to get the gap there to fit between the F and the O. Or a little bit this way. between the O and the R. So I'm gonna have to kind of make a choice here on which ones I want, because I wanna have to cut one of these letters. I may end up with that R right there. That may be the easiest thing to do. I'll show you how it turns Okay, out. so I'm gonna do it right there in that gap with the R. So what I try to do is line up that vertical of the R with the line. So now with a new sharp razor blade. I'm trying to slice it right there. Slice it right there. That will be how this comes apart. Okay, if I did this right, that should just pull right apart. I think it's going to work. This is going to be kind of crazy. Well, actually, the the upper part here will be held to the uh, electronics bay with a rivet. So once I get that lined up, there we go. Stand back. 
looks good. Okay, the graphics are all on. Kind of give you a rundown of what it looks like here. So I'm gonna take a break, just kind of let those that vinyl sit. I don't know if they need to the adhesive needs to gas off or the air bubbles come out or not, but I'm gonna wait a little while before I spray any clear on it. There's the homemade OK Turbo. Cut on a cricket machine. Well, I think it looks pretty cool. I might go stand it out in the backyard and get a shot of it. It is a tall rocket, I'll tell you that. Before I started painting it and, and decals and everything, it weighed just exactly six pounds. So I may uh, see where I'm at now. I still need to add all the recovery stuff and put things inside the electronics bay, but I'm gonna go stand this thing up. Yep, still looks pretty cool. Now the big thing is, where do I put the rail button so that when it's on the launch rod, it looks good there too. It's important. Okay. Of course, well, I still have to put the electronics bay together and, and some things like that, but I think she turned out really nice.